Hi, I'm Christina and you're watching CHTV. This is the place to be seen and heard. If you're in business, you will already know the power of good communication. Today, I'm chatting to a much sought after speaker because her style of communication is unique and so empowering. It is the real life stories she uses that form a foundation of a valuable and relatable message to her audience. With 20 years of experience, we are in for a treat and perhaps some laughs as we get to see how emotion creates motion and how this is where the action happens. We'll meet Julie Cross in just a moment, but first, let's see how it all began for her. Julie started her working career as a hairdresser in her teens, but quickly found her strength was in motivating and inspiring others, which quickly moved her into management and leadership roles. Here, her capabilities of communicating and empowering others was evident in sales and training. It was in the capacity as a trainer that Julie discovered her passion and natural talent for speaking. With this passion, she created a successful business of her own. And today, Julie inspires and energizes individuals and teams to be emotionally strong and resilient to make an impact in their life and business. <laughs> Welcome to CHTV, Julie. Thanks, Christina. Great to be here. Very excited. It is a very exciting time because we get to chat about you and your life and business. Excellent. You've had an incredible start to your career life. Your job that you had as a hairdresser in your teens to where you are today. I mean, what an incredible journey you've had. Plus, all the other things that you've done raising children, and I'm sure we'll get to those stories in a moment. But first, tell me about your greatest impact in business today. Well, look, I'd have to say my greatest impact for me is that work I do from the stage. You know, so t just to be able to get up on the stage, to be able to share your message and see how it affects people in your audience, to watch their emotions, to watch their aha moments when they, a light bulb goes off and they're really getting a point, you know, to the nodding, to the, to the looking at each other and giving each other the, you know, like, did you get that? So it's just, it's watching that it, it's, and knowing that you made a change and then getting all those messages afterwards. You know, I feel so humbled and honored to, to come home and have messages in my inbox saying that, you know, you've made an impact on my life today and thank you for sharing your story because, you know, I can't tell you what it meant to me and that you give people hope, you know, that's, um, you know, what an honor, what an honor to be able to do that. So yeah, very grateful that I can have that impact. So you've had an incredible two decades of this journey. The impact that you are creating today, what would you tell your younger self? Oh, you know what I would tell her? I would have told her that all those things that you worried about, all the times that you got teased for being too loud, for your laugh being too raucous, for you know being too silly, for being too childlike, that they would in fact turn out to be your greatest gifts. And that in that time that you were trying to cover them up to blend into everybody else and to be with the cool kids, that you know you needn't have bothered because in the end, though all of those things that you hated at that point about yourself because you stood out from the crowd. So in finding out that, yeah, in fact, that all of that stuff that I was so worried about as a teenager would turn out to be the gifts that now people pay me for, that that's what they want from me. And so, and now that is part of my message about embracing your who you are and knowing that standing out from the crowd is, is what we want from you. We want people to be individual. We want them to stand out from the crowd, whether that's individually or as a business. That's what, that's what people come for. And so, you know, I look back at that girl now that was so scared scared and worried about about not fitting into the cool crowd and realise that it was the greatest gift not to. And in fact, that those things, it's okay. It's all okay. Just flow with it. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Now tell me, the success that you've had, obviously from stage, you've scaled your business. Tell me about how you did that. Yeah, well, that's been an interesting process for me, Christina, I've got to say, because, you know, I very much went out I read a book called Speak and Grow Rich, and this is how I kind of based my business on this book called Speak and Grow Rich. It was written by two bureau owners from the United States, Speakers Bureau Owners, and that became my Bible. Now, I didn't know anything about a speaking or training business, so I read this book, I bought a whiteboard, you know, and I'd go to the, take my whiteboard to a hairdressing salon, set it up, and I'd present. And then it just kind of grew from there. So as it grew, one of the things it said in this book is, 
there is no point spending a lot of money back of room if people don't want to buy you from the stage. If, if your message isn't resonating with an audience, then what would, would be the point of developing all of the back of room stuff, of getting the big website, of spending all that money on stationery? You've got to first of all know that your message is going to sell that people will want to buy what you've got to say. So I very much worked on that, my stage craft, my ability to connect with an audience, my ability to craft my message so that there were takeaways for the audience. So I've spent a lot of time doing that, and so I flowed with that, and, and that's gotten bigger and I've had more clients, so now I really need to scale my business back a room. And so I'm on a journey right now of making sure that my back a room or my systems catch up with what's happening on the stage. So I'm in a process now of redoing my website, automation, developing more products, etc. So, um, you know, and I've been 20 years in it, so I'm sort of catching up in that space at the moment, and that's kind of okay. So I'm looking forward to developing more in, in that area of my life. So I'm a bit of a flower, I kind of flow, and then when it's time, I take action. That's really good advice, actually. Focus on the craft at the front and see yeah. who, who, who will be wanting to invest. Absolutely. Now, you're not a comedian, right? But you weave laughter into your talks. Yeah. Tell me about Apparently, that. Apparently, I'm happen? funny. Like, <laughs> I didn't ever set out to be funny. I didn't do any courses on being funny. But then I would start to share these stories and people would laugh and I'd go, jeez keep that in that was funny you know so it just became this this thing the part of what I do and apparently as I said it's funny but then as my speaking business developed and as I started studying the craft of speaking there was that realization that actually funny is great people need funny laughter is so important for us and I think that in this very politically correct world we have gotten to a point where we're not sure when to laugh anymore because if I laugh is someone going to feel like I'm laughing at them you know mm -hmm. am I going to offend somebody and depending on how emotionally fragile we are, maybe we would be offended. So I just have a bit of a, a passion for um, inspiring people to laugh again. You know, and one of the things I say to my audience is, haven't you been so tired that you've laughed hysterically at something you know is not funny, but you can't stop laughing at it? And we all can relate to that. And that is your body saying, I need something right now because we're in a low energy space. The immediate, uh, immediately after you laugh, you will feel re-energized, you will feel lighter, you will feel brighter, you'll be more creative. Laughter relaxes you back into your natural self. And your next conversation will be one of your most honest and authentic engagements because that's the power of laughter. So we need laugh in our lives. And I can see my audience lacking on to laughter. Laughter is emotion. You know, one of the first sounds we made was a cry, the next one was a laugh before we ever said any words. So laughter is so important. So yeah, so I started, um, you know, realising that laughter was important and, that, and that's often what people would say when they've left a show. I have, can't remember the la last time I laughed so much. And then I kind of say, well, what have you been doing? You know, if my show's the last time you've laughed that much, what's going on? So um, laughter is so important, you know, and I think in this world where we're doing all the duck face, you know, this is the <laughs> yeah, and then I see a photo of myself laughing, and I realise, you know, maybe that's why, why we're avoiding it. But no, our laughter is so good for us, and I just um, so there will always be laughter in my shows. But sometimes people are laughing and crying at the same time, so I definitely take you on a roller coaster ride of emotion. Well, you've just made laughter super cool because for somebody like me who was born half a century ago, we didn't really know about political correctness. Yes. I mean, we could just do whatever we wanted. Yes. And I really struggle with political correctness. Yes. I want to be outspoken and say it as it is, but I am afraid But you've just made laughter pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm yes. putting that back into Get the mix. laughter's back. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me why some people would think that listen to you or that either participate um, in your shows or that come across you would think that inspiration was fluff. Oh, Tell me look, about that. Oh, well, I'm passionate about that, Christina, so I'm glad you asked. Because, you know, when I first started speaking, in, inspirational entertainment, as I call it, or this inspiring message, motivational style messages, were very much a big thing. These were, these were the days that John Gray was coming over, Louise Hay, Wayne Dyer, and they would do these big events at, you know, the entertainment centres, and they would sell out. So it was very much a focus back then. And then the kind of the pendulum shifted a little bit, and it was all about data, 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 statistics, policy, procedures. Um, and we stopped doing this inspirational message and that became known as you know a bit of fluff but it's not fluff it's the foundation you can have all the data you like in your head now the, pe the reason that people don't go out for a bed out of bed for a walk in the morning is not because they don't know how to walk they've got the equipment they know the process and they have enough data on it are we waiting for the government to do another study spend a million dollars to do another study to discover exercise is good for us 
I think we've been educated about that. We keep saying we need more education. I think people know exercise is good for you now. So it's got nothing to do with education or having the data on it or having the information on it or the statistics on it. That's not creating the motivation still for people to get out of bed and go for a walk. So what's a missing link? Emotion, motivation. And so that's where inspirational speakers come in because I connect the message and the data that you're getting in your head with the emotion in your heart. And I remind people you're worth the walk because that's the reason people aren't going for a walk, not because they don't know how to walk, not because they don't get that it's good for you, but they forgot they were worth the walk, the emotion surrounding it. And that's the connection I want to make. And that's the importance of inspirational messages is that it connects people with that feeling. We are not just heads. I ask the audience to point to themselves. And when you ask the whole audience to point to themselves, I don't see people going, I'm all the degrees in my head. I don't see people going, I'm my designer shoes. Everyone points here. What sits here? Heart space, feeling, emotion. So if you want to fill people's heads with information, you better massage their hearts and connect the message with the emotion or people will not be inspired. And that's what I talk to leaders about. You know, you can't just give them a product knowledge. You've got to inspire them with the vision of your product, the vision of your business. That's what they will own and that's what they'll come to work for, not the product knowledge. So wow. yeah, it's wow. all about emotion. Wow, you got me there. What an amazing way to motivate somebody. Mm. You truly, you, you truly understand your craft so well. Thank Incredible. You. Oh, thank Incredible. You. So you've got this really cool outfit on today. Oh yes, look at me in my sequence. Okay, so tell me, what's with the bling? Yeah, what's with the bling? <laughs> and you know, bling's everywhere now. I have to say, I just bought this dress from Q a week ago, and it is, and I, ha I was going to wear it today as well, but it is bright purple, massive sequin dress in Q. I was wearing sequins before they were anywhere. So the way the sequins happened is, when I first started my business 20 years ago, I wore corporate gear. I just wore, you know, corporate gear, and I would go to a hairdressing salon and present what I did but I have this this when I talk to businesses about this I have this thing that you must listen to your tribe you know your tribe are always whispering to you what they want from you and so often we consult coaches or business coaches but we're not listening to the people that actually buy from us and they're the ones buying from us so we would want to listen to them mm. and so this lady said to me one day, she said, Julie, I was at this shop the other day and it was one of those import shops that imported all of these clothes from Asia and there were these bright sequin tops hanging in the window and she said, I saw that sequin top and it reminded me of you and your personality. Listen to your tribe. So I thought, what if I started wearing that? And then I started thinking about the courage it would take for me to wear that and walk into a corporate environment in my bright sequin top and the judgments that I'd be hearing from everybody. Oh, look at you. Yeah, 7.30 in the morning when I'm going into stay. I can see everyone looking at me. Oh, leftover from last night. Love, a eh? Big night. I can feel it. You know, so it was going to take courage for me to do that. But that's the very courage I talk about. I talk about the courage of owning your space. I talk about the courage of standing out from the crowd. Because if you want to be successful, that requires you to stand out from the crowd. And that will mean that sometimes you will walk into a room and people will look at you and go, well, who do you think you are? And I know that that's what they sometimes think about me as I walk in. Well, who do you think you are in your nice little sequin dress? And so that, that was very then relatable to my message. It was perfect for my message. So I was there doing it and immediately I could walk on stage and say to the audience, I see you talking about my dress. And they'd all go, and someone would always come up to me and go, it was me. And I go, don't worry, you weren't the only one. But immediately that creates a connection because I know how, what you were thinking. So the more exposure you get, the more exposed we will be emotionally. So I, I literally wear it to remind everybody that you have to put yourself out there, um, that you will, look, you will be exposed, people will talk about you. Um, that means you're on track, you know, that means you're right on track to being wow. a success. So then I just continued to wear it. And of course, it was the best marketing thing I ever did because I get known as Mrs. Sparkle. People always remember the sparkle. If they can't remember my name, it's always, you know, the lady that wears the sparkle clothes. Um, I get sent photos of sparkle toilets sparkle shoes sparkle handbags sparkle dresses so um, it's been a it's been a wonderful thing to do and now you can buy sparkle everywhere I might have come up with something new maybe feathers or something but no I think I'm wearing sparkle but I'm loving it I did today. notice you have a little I, bit of bling I did well today <laughs>